efficiency. That's the key word that was driving the design of this Airbus A350. The first time it's been seen here at Singapore and the first time many people have had a chance to really look uh, first-hand at the details behind this extraordinary aircraft. The aircraft design itself is based heavily on the use of composites, which in this case represents 53% of the weight of the aircraft, compared to say 11% on the A330, which it succeeds. The design also incorporates many aerodynamic and propulsion system advances which are making their first appearance on any Airbus type. The leading edge of the wing, seen here, right here by the root of the wing, is one of the key examples of this new design. This is a leading edge section inboard, which is called the droop nose, and is part of an effort to increase lift during low speed flight handling and to better distribute the lift across the wing during the uh, slow speed handling. As we move further around the aircraft, let's have a look at a few more features of the design. One of the most interesting aspects of the A350 is the wing. The leading edge and the trailing edge play a pivotal part in all aspects of the aircraft's flight in cruise, slow speed handling, approach and landing, and of course takeoff. If you come this way, I'll show you the importance of this wing design. A unique design that's never been employed in quite this way on any commercial aircraft before. It's a very clever, simple system which relies on the actuation of the trailing edge in such a way that the lift is distributed across the cord and span of the wing in a better way for cruise efficiency. Winglets. That's another way of reducing drag and improving cruise efficiency. Airbus was one of the earliest to introduce it with the A320 wingtip device. But on the A350 has taken larger derivatives of winglet device which were employed on the A340, 330 and 380 to a whole new level. The A350 wingtip device is in fact a curved design reminiscent of some of the blended devices and configurations seen on other Boeing aircraft for example. In this case, it's very similar also to the, the sharklet, which has been introduced now on the A320. The device not only reduces the amount of span required for the same lift, but increases efficiency overall, particularly during cruise, which is major reason for its employment in this configuration. Another interesting aspect of the A350 design is the fairing behind the trailing edge of the wing. As you can see, this is quite a unique design and it is meant to help distribute the, the pressure loads and flow, balance the flow around the fuselage where the wing root intersection melds into the rear fuselage itself. Big fans. This is what you'd expect on today's modern engines. But Rolls-Royce has taken it to a new level with the Trent XWB84, the initial version that will power both the A350 800 and 900 dominated by its 118 inch diameter fan. This three shaft engine incorporates a second stage of the intermediate pressure turbine, as well as numerous changes within the flow path of the engine, as well as material changes as well. The compressor also incorporates several Blisk stages for the first time. In the future, the next version of this engine, which will be developed to power the A350-1000, is the XWB-97. Although it will have the same 118-inch diameter fan, additional flow will go through the engine thanks to clever work within the interior of the engine and an inflected annulus which will increase the airflow directly into the core.